It's this guy, Joe Sestak. How are you, sir? I'm well, Kathy. Thanks for having me on. Uh Uh-huh. I want you to know I voted for you. Oh, thanks, Kathy. But uh, it didn't, apparently didn't have any effect. I was probably the only one in Wyoming County that did, but, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? It's the way it is. Well, you know, I spent a lot of time the last five and a half years teaching at five colleges, universities in Pennsylvania, and a lot of time in the rural counties. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. I used to work for the University of Pennsylvania many years ago, and I loved it. I just I just loved it there. It was awesome. I could have worked there until I died. But anyway, you are, are in the area today. Tell me what you did. Yep, I uh, came into Scranton uh, and continued my walk. As you know, I walked 422 miles across Pennsylvania. Yes. I wanted to show people that I would walk in their shoes and understand their hopes and concerns, their challenges. So today, I came into Scranton and I went to the United Neighborhood Center. There. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Well, actually, I, I don't think I've been there because I think they had a fire and had to move. But I know they, they I sort had of know. moved. Yeah. They, and yeah. boy, the services they do with first oh, seniors. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Domestic abuse, mm-hmm. the work they do mm-hmm. with the batterers and the, and, the, and the housing that they oversee to move people. And it was a fantastic meeting there. Cool. And then I walked and I went down to dress for success. Oh, gosh, I know where they are, too. That's another great organization. It is wonderful. Yeah. Got seven of them here in Pennsylvania. Started mm-hmm. off of where, you know, someone wants to, about to go to an interview. And you know the challenges of poor women. Mm-hmm. And they go ahead and, 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 you know, the lower income and all can, you know, get a, the right suit to go in and then help someone win the job with the award. But they've, they've evolved so far. What they do for career services, making sure yes. that those things about network, if you're ready to work in a team, all those little things that sometimes we don't quite have as well in our schools. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, they're a power powerful force for women. Well, it's a great, uh, the, the reason I love it is because they're active in trying to get people off welfare. And I don't think there's enough like action stuff really that is happening, things that are happening to help people get off welfare. And it's like, not like most of them want to be on welfare. They just are. And I just, I just love it. I love the whole hey, idea. Kathy, you hit it right on. If anything was most emphasized by the executive director, this is what she said. $17 million were already saved just by having people get off welfare to get a mm-hmm. job. Jack Wagner, she did a study on this as Solicitor General and showed the efficiency, the effectiveness of this, the impact of it for one dollar in hundreds of dollars are coming out yes. for revenues and to get things done by productivity by people getting a job well that's fantastic i'm really glad you went to those two places did you do anything else where'd you go for lunch what'd you have for lunch <laughs> that's interesting you know i wake up in the morning i go for a run about 5 5 30 oh, i'm usually done by quarter six <sighs> and then i don't even eat i mean i have a glass oh. of you know breakfast is the most event of the day. important meal of the day joe I'm supposed to. My mom, my my, mom, my wife thinks. Yeah, you know, same thing, crazy. really, sometimes, yes. <laughs> but, you know, if I eat something during the day, man, I start getting, do, you know, do, dozy there, and I just can't uh, afford it when you're running a 24 7 campaign. Right, right. Very good. Well, good. Oh, okay, but you got to eat something. You got to eat something at some point. But I'm glad you're. <laughs> I'm glad you're running because I'm not doing that. So um, now, when is the primary, and who are you up against? Primary is April twenty. Oh, I thought it was May. See that? I know nothing. April twenty sixth. Well, okay. no, no, no. You're you're usually right. They move it earlier mm-hmm. uh, because of presidential year here in Pennsylvania. Ah. Uh, and because uh, we want to be important. <laughs> I wasn't running against anyone, and I kept saying anybody wants to get in can get in because if you probably know, Kathy, or heard, the establishment in D.C., particularly the Washington, D.C. establishment, didn't kind of like my independence Mm -hmm. when I didn't sit down against Senator Specter when he switched parties. Mm -hmm. So I've got kind of a scarlet eye on me of independence representing people above party. And so they searched out six people to get against me, and they've now got somebody who's in there. And then there's a mayor of a town who's also gotten in. But I keep my focus on what you brought up at the very beginning, Pat Toomey. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, that's where the focus has to be because, you know, if we continue to have him be the most obstructionist, well, actually, he's in the top couple of obstructionist centers down there, we can't get things done from foreign policy to right here at home where he's voted against every single veteran's bill since he's been a congressman and voted yeah. in the war up until December when the scandal happened. He finally had a vote for a VA bill. Huh. Oh, it still didn't pass, did it? 
Well, it finally, that one did finally pass because of the scandal. But what didn't pass is when he voted against and led the filibusters against the bills for standalone bills for jobs for our vets coming home because their unemployment rate was 4% higher, even though he voted to send them to war. And second, he led the vote against the PTSD mental health bill because I go to prison every year to visit my vets on Armed Forces Day, uh, mm-hmm. Veterans Day, and also sometimes on Armed Forces Day. 47% of our vets are there because of drug or alcohol-related crime, often stemming from PTSD because they don't get the proper care. Mm-hmm. The VA asked for more money to take care of them. You know, this is the byproduct of war, and gosh darn it, he said no. Damn. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, he's got, I, I don't know. He's there got is one people, thing to do. He, he's got people. Replace them. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got people that he has to answer to. And especially where you live. I went to that senior center today. The first man I met was a B-29 mm. ass gunner mm. in World War II. Wow. And by the way, at that senior center, he was baking cookies. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he gave me a couple of them. My God, how can you vote against his VA benefits? I don't know. I don't understand that. I, I really don't. I guess, I, I don't know. Maybe he's worried about where the money's coming from. I don't know. To him, what it is is an ideology that government should not do anything. So, for example, even he has voted to lead the filibuster for the Paycheck Fairness Act for women. Seven times he's voted against it. Why? Because he doesn't believe government should intervene for fairness for women. The marketplace, he says, will figure it out. But a woman makes 72 cents to 92 cents on the dollar. When I was at Dress with Success, we talked about this. We talked about the fact that one-third of all small businesses are owned by a woman. Yet when banks lend out to small businesses, less than 4% of the loans to small businesses go to women. In short, fairness is good, not just for the individual, but we all benefit when everybody gets an equal chance. He says, government, out of here. And I think government should be out of our uh, religion, out of our press, but it should not be, it should be here to help advance opportunities for us. Yeah, I don't know whether there's a, there's a fine line and I don't know whether anybody knows where it is because I sort of believe in both and it's Absolutely. it's tough, you know, but I, but I understand what you're saying. And- And, Kathy, that's my philosophy. The two of them have to be aligned. It isn't one or the other. You're on your own or it's all about government. The proper balance between the Republicans and Democrats has always been this fine line. So you can have General Eisenhower as a Republican president vote and, excuse me, sign the transportation bill for interstate highway system. Yet Pat Toomey led the filibuster of it and went to the Tea Party and said, We did something constructive today. We killed the transportation bill. After Mm. he was in Pennsylvania saying he would like to see a long-term transportation bill. He he can't say something here and vote a different way down there. Yeah, I don't know. All right, um, I got to run because we got uh, property taxes to pay, as L.A. likes to say. But I'm I'm glad (laughs) you called in. Thanks for coming to our our area. Glad to have you. It was great to be with you. Bye-bye.